my name is Travis Kaufman. I am originally from Mountain Home, Arkansas, and I've been in Fort Collins for about five years now, a little bit over five years. I came out west for an active outdoor lifestyle, the good weather, um, pretty much the recreation in general, so getting into different new sports. So last year I really got into mountain biking, um, also kind of around that time trail running, but also a big downhill skier, um, some cross country skiing. So the activities, this is a great state for, for <laughs> just building up more and more hobbies. <laughs> so I got into trail running um, really about a year ago. Uh, I would go out and usually do about five miles or so um, at the end of work days. And I'd run in the trails, um, Foothills Trail like around town, the trails up at Lori, um, and then also into Horsetooth uh, Mountain Space. So I was running on Monday, February 4th. Um, I was going out, starting in, in Lori State Park, and I was gonna do uh, between a 12 and 15 mile run. So starting from the Arthur's Rock parking lot, I ran along the South Valley trails uh, through Lori Park and then ended up linking up with uh, Horsetooth Mountain Park. And from there, uh, did my first Towers run of the year. Uh, it's actually the first time I've ran Towers. I've only mountain biked it before. Um, but I just know it's an intense hill. It's really good for, for getting some hill training in. So I was a little bit nervous and jazzed up about actually just running the hill and getting that complete. So I was running up the hill. Uh, finally made it up to the top of Towers and up there I went down on a trail to the south. I think it's called Pirate Trail, but others just call it West Ridge Trail. And so running along West Ridge Trail, I was planning on just going to uh, Horsetooth Rock. But along the trail, uh, there's some pretty icy conditions and I was slipping a little bit more than I wanted to. So I turned back and then I remember seeing a spur for West Ridge that went to the east of Towers. And so I took that spur and then about a quarter mile into that run, I uh, heard some pine needles rustle behind me. And uh, luckily I was able to actually turn my head. Um, I'd say more often than not, I, I would turn my head, but sometimes I wouldn't thinking it's just a deer or a rabbit or any sort of small woodland creature. Um, but, and the back of my mind, there's always that thought that it could be something else. And that something else this time happened to be a mountain lion. So one of my worst fears was confirmed and just kind of had like my heart sink into my stomach a little bit and threw my hands up and started yelling. And, um, when I first turned around, the cat was probably 10 feet away from me and it just kept approaching. And as it got close, it just kind of lunged at me. So I threw my arms up and it latched onto my wrist. So I was just kind of protecting my face. So yeah, it latched onto my wrist and then it just started clawing along my like face and then my legs. And I was just kind of screaming the whole time, um, doing my barbarian yell as best I could. <laughs> and I, tried to throw it off of me um, and as I tried to throw it off me like we both left the trail because it just re-gripped onto my wrist and kind of tumbled off the slope to the south side of the trail and uh, from there it was like just a wrestling match uh, it was thrashing and then it still had my wrist locked in its jaws and I was able to kind of get my left knee um, to pin down its back legs um, because as a pretty new cat owner I realized that once you get a cat on its back its back legs go crazy and that little rabbit thrash and um, so I was pretty wary of the the back claws actually hitting my my guts or my groin or anything like that so I was able to pin down its back legs with my left knee and then the front paws I, I don't actually remember what, what happened with those. I mean, I was kind of deflecting them with my left hand, but then I was grabbing at some sticks that were close by and I was trying to 
um, stab it in the throat with some sticks. Um, unfortunately, the sticks were kind of rotten, so they kept on breaking. <laughs> and then I was able to uh, pick up a big rock um, with my left hand, and I was trying to hit it on the head with a big rock, but it was kind of a tough angle because my wrist is still in its mouth, and I'm not really getting a full swing, but I was able to kind of hit it in the back of the head a few times, and I just knew that it wasn't going to be super effective. So then I used um, just a little body weight transition and got my right leg um, close to my wrist and was able to finally get it onto the cat's neck. And then I stepped on its neck and then eventually was able to suffocate it. And then it finally released from my wrist. And then after the incident, after I was able to, to finally um, get it to release, um, by unfortunately killing it, I was able to run back to Towers Trail, but that whole run back, I, I was on a crazy high fear, I don't know, fear high? I don't know what you call it, but I was, I was booking, I was just realizing that all of these little rock overhangs are just like perfect lion territory and like everything I was seeing. And I was looking down and I was seeing some tracks in the snow because I was on the the north facing side of the mountain and I was like well these are probably lion tracks now that I look closely enough and so the the fear was definitely tangible then. I uh, ended up having to run another three miles down. Um, luckily along the way I, I came across a trail runner probably around mile two who was running up. Um, so he saw my situation, um, accompanied me down, so we, we jogged down the, the remaining, uh, remaining miles of towers and uh, then ran into another couple um, pretty close to the Soderberg parking lot area of Horsetooth. And uh, they had a cell phone and I, I don't know if they actually contacted any rangers directly, but um, they followed us down to the parking lot and then of that couple, um, this really nice woman, Rachel, she gave me a ride to the hospital while the first runner I encountered, Spencer, he took her husband, Noah, to go get my truck at Lori. So I was parked at Lori, which is probably six and a half miles from where the attack occurred. Um, and then ended up on the, the south side. So we were at Soderberg parking lot and that's where I got a ride to the hospital. So after I got to the hospital, um, they got me cleaned up and then were able to kind of see the extent of the wounds. Everything, my face was just kind of a bloody mess when I first got there. Um, so once everything got washed out, uh, they, they knew they were gonna have to give me some stitches along my cheek. So I ended up getting 17 stitches along my cheek here and then another uh, six along the bridge of my nose and then two over here on this side of the cheek. And then I got another three stitches uh, in my wrist where the, the line had latched on for the majority of the fight. Other than that, it was just a bunch of, um, I have several puncture wounds that were just from teeth or claws, so nothing, no long gashes, just a lot of small little circle sized things. And at the hospital, luckily they pumped me full of a bunch of antibiotics. So hopefully all those puncture wounds don't amount to uh, an infected wound. So, so far I'm a, about a week out and I feel great things are healing up really nicely. I think it's just one of those really weird sensational stories. Um, it's super rare. I feel like I should go buy a bunch of lottery tickets. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where it, it captures the imagination just because it's a modern day man versus nature scenario potentially. Um, I know there's not that much of it. We get a little bit more disconnected as, uh, as we've like come through the 21st century. So I don't know, there's still, I think a degree of aura and mystique around that, that there is certain scenarios we can still kind of have a really dangerous and potentially deadly experience in nature. Yeah, my advice for people who would be a little bit more reluctant to go into the back country or open spaces is to Again, just be aware that you are sharing that space with wildlife. And um, one of the things that I'm really glad that I did was turn my head and I couldn't have done that if I had earbuds in. So 
I think just to kind of fully appreciate the sights and sounds of nature, go without earbuds and if you can, go with a buddy. That's something that I will uh, be doing going forward, going and doing some of my more long remote runs with a friend and also whenever mountain biking season comes around, doing the same.